Okay guys, so welcome back to Florida. I have got my new bow in hand, and what happened was, is I decided to drop down to 43 pounds at 27 inches. Now the catch is, my old arrows were tuned for, I think, 47 at 27. So my old arrows are now too stiff. So I've got to start over. So I wanted to walk you guys through how I tune my bow, how I tune my arrow. And honestly, it's probably the most important thing I've ever learned, and probably the most important thing you guys are ever going to learn. On how to do this so I'm gonna start with bear shaft tuning now this one right here that I cut the fletching off of I want to see how this arrow bear shafts out of my new bow it's too stiff we knew it was gonna to be too stiff of an arrow because of the drop in weight so the one next to it right now is a full length shaft see how much longer it's almost four inches long this is gonna show a very very weak spine right now now when I say a weak spine it's going to fly, when it hits the target, it's going to hit knock left. It's going to be flying down crooked, just like this. And what we're going to do is we want to stiffen it up a little bit. You always want to start with a weak arrow. So we're going to shave off, say, a quarter inch at a clip. Then it flies like this. Then you shave off another quarter. Then it's like this. And by the time we're done, after hitting it little by little, finally we're going to be shooting a laser. Not just that, because this is a new bow, my last video I did for you guys was how to tie on knock points. So, watch the video. It's easier than for me to explain it. But what I did was I tied these knock points on, and I could actually twist them up and down the string to raise and lower my knock. So we're going to start with that. So here we go. How to bear shaft tune. Put on one of your, in, your outserts, inserts, whatever you want to call them. I use hot melt only. So it's on there with the field point that I want to be using. And I just stick a knock in. Now what we're going to do, let me walk down this way. I want to be standing completely square with this target back here. Now notice it's a foam target. I'm not going to shoot at this one below at the hay bale. I'm going to shoot at the foam. And I want to see how that arrow flies. Not only am I looking at, let me stick this back in the ground. Not only am I looking at how the arrow flies through the air before it hits the target. What I want to do is I want to see if it's knock left. If it's knock right, congratulations, your arrow is already too stiff. You can't do anything except for add more weight up front. That's a basket case. Let's not even try to do that. I'm already running 225. So let's shoot this arrow. I'm perfectly square with it. So when I get over there, I'll be able to look and see exactly what it does. Now, I shoot a clicker tab. These are our, our, our clicker tabs that we build. So it's going to take me a moment to get through my shot. It takes me I don't know, probably four to five seconds to really shoot through my sequence. So let's take a shot. By the way, I'm only maybe five or six yards. And this should go knock left. Now you see that, that is dramatically knock left. So like I said, we're shooting completely square with the target. Now watch this. See how knock left that is? The height, now here's the next thing. My height right now for my string, for my, uh, for my knock points, I can tell you right now it's a little bit low. I would rather have knock high right now while tuning. That way I'm not getting any false readings. So right now, just to start, I'm going to raise my knock point. Now, like I said, we could twist it. I'm just going to do one, two turns. One, two turns. So now my knock point is raised. The point of that is, if it's too low, it can do one of these and bounce off the shelf. We can't bear shaft tune if it's bouncing off the shelf, so I'd rather have knock high to start. So we already know this needs cut now. So let's get over to the saw. I'm gonna cut, say, I'm gonna take a full inch off because I already know that I could at least do that. So let's start with that. Okay, so we're gonna pop out my knock. And let's see, I only wanna take like an inch off. So let's adjust the saw, get it so it takes an inch. Come on, keep adjusting. There we go, that looks good. And I'm able to take an inch off only because I know, because my old arrow was right around here. Hell, I could probably take an inch and a half off. I'm gonna take an inch and a half off. There we go. All right, let's fire this bad boy up. Arrow saws, do you need one? Yeah, 
you could try to do it cheap ways and everything, but the amount that I cut, it was just worth getting an arrow saw. Okay. Pop the knock back in, and let's shoot. All right, let's so take another shot, see how she feels, see how she shoots. Now, here's the other thing. If you take a shot, and your shot was mediocre, meaning you were mediocre, redo it. Don't go and cut, you know, take the shot multiple times. You want to be confident in it. So, here we go. Perfectly straight in line with that target. I'm going to try to shoot a newer spot in the foam, so that way it doesn't give me a false reading either. There we go. Still showing weak. On a good note, showing weak, but it's still showing me knock high, which is good because we raised our knock point. Now I'm gonna hold it. So can you see, see how she's pointing to the left? Now let's trim it up again and hopefully she'll be right around here. And then eventually we'll get it right around there. Okay. Let's shoot her. Cool. All right, so I'm perfectly square with the target. Much better. Much, much better. Let's cut some more. All right, so I think I got her now. We're gonna take one final shot and see how it looks. And uh, I'm probably actually gonna mess around shooting just bare shaft for a little while just to make sure my form is good and everything. You know, if you're not confident in, confident in the shot, don't cut the arrow. You could always cut it more, but you can't add more arrow on there. So I'll shoot this one quite a few times until I know I'm completely happy. Okay, here we go. She's done. She's completely done. That was a bullseye. Literally nothing but straight knock. Height's good, everything. You see how square that is from the target? See, like if I was over here, if I shot crooked, then it wouldn't make sense. But I made sure to shoot square and she is done. So that's it. So now the game plan is, I'm gonna build a bunch of arrows right now. What I'm gonna do is, glue them all up, get everything put together, and then from there, I'm gonna start comparing my broadhead to my bear shaft and comparing to my field point. And what'll happen is, is if my broadhead, let's just say my broadhead hits low, but my field point hits high, what that means is my knock point is too high. So we're gonna compare the two. So broadhead hit low, field point hit high, I will actually lower my knock point and all of a sudden then it's like this then lower my knock point a hair more then it's like this so we want both of those to meet exactly and I'll show you guys that in just a minute let me run to the shop and cut a bunch of arrows real fast so I only use hot melt and the reason why I don't use epoxy or anything I like to be able to change things up anytime that I feel like it just by heating it up so we got one two three four five and let's see, I need a couple of these. So I'm gonna put all of my outsert slash inserts, whatever you wanna call them, onto the arrows. And because that's what I have my saw set up for right now is that actual arrow length. So I'll cut them that way and then afterwards come inside and start fletching up. Um, I'm fletching everything is two fletch. Like I said, you know, the importance of this bear shaft tuning is. is I don't even need to have feathers on here and this arrow flies perfect. So when you go to the 
the what is it the archer shop and everything and they're like oh what length do you need your arrows cut or we can cut them at 28 or we can cut them at this like you can't go by that because you don't know what you need you have no clue what you need until you bear shaft tune so the rule is start with a weak arrow like i said look for that that knock left that's what's really really important is knock left but uh hot melt hot melt's the way to go so i heated my outsert up a little bit and now I'm going to heat up a chunk of the hot melt. This is a really good hot melt, by the way. I don't know what company it is or anything, but it's nice. Oop, why are you... Okay, I decided to spin for some reason. Oh. oh, okay. I didn't realize I did that kind. So let's put that in. <laughs> yeah, a little brain dead moment there. So hot melt's on there, and I'm going to reheat it. And da 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 I don't get it too hot because you're really not supposed to heat up carbons like at all. So hot enough just to get it in here. Go in there. So in, give it a little bit of a turn, let it cool. And then, yeah, let's do another one. Let's uh, lighters right here. It's a lot easier if you have one of those big cool candle things. I don't have one. So this is how I do it. I just use a lighter. And once I put this in and I get everything perfect, once again, the hot melt, the whole point of it is, is I can index my broadheads. So I like my broadheads completely flat. If they're not flat, I am not shooting straight. I can tell you that right now. I just, I won't shoot properly. So I'll be able to heat now by doing it like this. It's the way to go. It's always been. Don't mind the mess in the shop. I own a leather company in case you haven't figured that out. Okay, that's good. And yeah, we'll get back to you when I'm done doing this. Done. Okay, so we're all set up to two fletch, and people ask why two fletch. Um, first of all, the whole main reason is, is I mean, we just bear shaft tune. You just watched an arrow fly perfectly with no feathers on it. So why would I need to go crazy and put three or even four fletch on there? So shelf contact with three drives me crazy. I really have to run a high knock point in order to make sure I don't get shelf contact, even after bear shaft tuning. But with two fletch, I just run it perfectly horizontal like this, done, finished. Um, there's a lot of people that do it. The weird thing is, is it's actually illegal in some tournaments, such as TAS, which makes no sense. I don't really understand it. But the good news is they're changing the rules next year for me. So I had to shoot four fletch. I was like, well, why don't you just put three? Because I'd have to build completely new arrows versus two fletch. I could just add another two on. But... Do I notice a difference with four fletch um, flight wise? Well, I get shelf contact, but it recovers very quickly. Two fletch just flies better. It's faster, it's cleaner, it's easier to do. Um, glue wise, first of all, the jig I'm using is a cheapy grayling jig. It's it's okay, it works. Um, it's not great, I had to modify it. And it's still a little finicky. Like you can see I'm touching here, but I'm not touching in the back. It's because the plastic's a little bit warped, so. I'll set the front and then I'll press the back and let that kick. Glue wise, all I use is Loctite Ultra Control Gel. Um, she works. She's cheap. She's easy. I can get it local. Um, it's clean. It's very, very clean versus, I mean, some of the guys still use like normal super glue and that stuff literally turns everything white if you get too much on an area or something like that. Um, however, I do notice that less is more with this stuff. If you put too much on, it won't bind. Some arrows, it doesn't stick to as easy. Like this one's taking a little bit longer. The new Carbon Paradox, for some reason, it doesn't like my glue. Well, let me just press it down. The front's kicked. But the back hasn't. She's fine now. So, we don't rotate the dial. What we end up doing right now is I will actually take the arrow out rotate it 180 degrees put it back in that's how i get my two fletch perfect 
Um, Featherwise, I use five inch parabolic gateways. I like gateway. They have all kinds of fun patterns and stuff like that. It's just, they shoot nice, they're clean, they're reliable. So I think you can get all of this stuff from Three Rivers. I don't even know where I got all my stuff. I've, I collect so much of it. So completely perpendicular or 180 degrees over. I don't use, like I said, I don't use a lot of glue. Too much and it just won't kick. I, I can't stand that when it won't kick. There we go. So completely over. Like I said, the jig is not the greatest, but she works. So the front set already. Just make sure that back is pressed down a little bit. One of these days I'm going to get one of the Blitzen Burgers, Witzes, or whatever the heck they're called. Yeah, a little bit more on the back. It's so weird how the back always takes longer. I never understood that. Good enough. Now, I dot mine. I'll come across the top and I'll really put a decent little dot on there. That way she holds. I don't want that to catch on anything, whether it's catching on my rest, if I have a poor release or something like that, and then the back. So I'm going to dot the back, dot the back, and that's it. So I'm going to finish doing these, and I'm going to show you guys how I compare broadheads to field points um, in order to get my knock point 100% perfect. I already know my side to side is going to be perfect from bear shaft tune, but my up and down, I still might have to raise or lower the, that adjustable knock point I built. So, Okay, so my arrows are all built. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do what I call broadhead tuning or I don't know if that's actually what it's called, but that's how I'm going to do it. So I'm going to take a broadhead, and I'm going to put it in the center of that foam target. And then what I'm going to do afterwards is I'm going to take a field point, and I'm going to shoot it. And I'm going to compare the two. If the broadhead hits low and the field point hits high, then I know that all I have to do is lower my tied-on knocks just a little bit. And so I'm going to lower it one twist, and I'm going to shoot it again, and then hopefully it'll be closer. And then I'll adjust again, and then eventually I'm going to have them both hitting the same exact spot. So it's a little breezy. Not exactly the best time to be tuning stuff, but ask me how much I care. I'm not shooting super far, but I'm just going to take my time. Really, be sure that your shot is well executed. You know, your form, your release, everything. Because it's the only way you're going to know if everything is correct. So here we go. That's really good clean shot. That's, I'm literally one inch to the right of the bullseye, but up and down is perfect. Now, we're hoping that our field point is gonna hit the same so I won't have to do any adjustment. But I'm pretty sure I'm good. I'm pretty darn sure I'm good already, but I wanna know. Oh, God. I guess I don't need to do any sort of adjusting at all. So are you ready for this? This is crazy. So we've got broadhead, field point. And these are not little broadheads either, by the way. You know, that's the thing. So let me pull out. Let me see what kind of damage I did. All right, I'm actually okay. So this is not a little broadhead. This is the Centaur Big Game Heads. I, I think they're like an inch and three quarter wide. Um, however, I still prefer the Battle Axes. Um, I'll end up tuning with the Battle Axe too, but let's just say I, I'm done. You know, if, in case you guys were wondering too, why am I doing this whole video in camo? It's because it's turkey season. I'm about to go turkey hunting. But for both of these to hit, that shows the reason why we bear shaft tuned. And, and that's exactly why we do this. So thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to subscribe. I've got a lot more stuff coming out real soon. So yeah, good luck out there.